everyone welcome back welcome back in today's tutorial we are going to learn how to incorporate an mcp server postgres mcp server into your dash app so now i can use my dash app to um, ask questions about my postgres data table so for example let's ask how many rows does my users table have it's going to activate the langchain agent it's going to think and it's going to give us it's going to access our postgres um, data database uh, or users table on my computer and it's going to give me the answer now this is a users table <clears throat> on my computer so i can ask for example let's ask this question that is an example question here we're going to go over the code well let's ask this how many what are the unique values in the agency column in my table and you'll see here that the answer is, I think there's a four unique values, these unique values. So this is correct. It's correctly accessing my Postgres users table um, and allowing the agent to retrieve information based on my question. And all of this is just using these two Python files, the app.py, which has the Langchain agent and the Dash app and the Postgres MCP server. So you've seen this um, file in the last video that we created where we uh, integrated the postgres mcp server to claw desktop so it's pretty much the same i don't, don't think i changed anything in this we're using the exact same um tool the mcp tool <coughs> that actually takes an sql query connects to my uh, table on my computer on my local machine um, executes the query and then returns all the rows to the Langchain agent well, soon we're going to the uh, Langchain agent is going to access this and then it's going to return everything in, in a JSON format so it's easy for Langchain agent to um, to interpret it so you see here this is the format so <clears throat> I'm going to give you this file Again, I talked about it in the last video, so I'm not going to review it here, but it's going to be on Charming Data, and you can access it um, and download the file. I'm also going to give you this file that we're going to go over quickly today. Uh, I'm also going to put it on the Charming Data platform where we, as a community, come together and work on monthly projects to learn AI, MCP servers, and data visualization. Um, and so you can access it here. It's going to be under the video. Okay, so this is the app file that allows us to, that builds this, right? A, a simple input field, a button, and a Langchain agent that can access the table. So let's see how we do this. Please, I'm not gonna go over every line of code, so if you have any questions, please ask them under the YouTube uh, description, uh, video description, in the comment section, and um, just make note of the fact that I'm using I think um, a fairly older version of, of creating like agents. Um, so you could update this to create a newer version, uh, but this still works. So I would definitely just use this code as is if you're new to this topic. So first of all, I'm importing all the different libraries needed to run this app. As you can see, uh, Langchain also has this module tool to uh, load MCP tools, uh, allowing the connection between MCP servers and Langchain agents. And then we have the agents here. <clears throat> so first I'm going to load my, um, uh, tell the, the app to find the ENV file, because in the ENV file is where I have my OpenAI key, right? It's a secret, so I'm not going to give it to you. I'm right, so going to access the OpenAI key um, and like this, load.env. And then we're just going to here, get the, yeah, the OpenAI key that's inside this .env file, and we're going to integrate it or assign it to our model, our GPT-40. All right. So now we have our model. Our agent is going to need three things: the model, the prompt, and the tool. And here we have the prompt, just a basic uh, chat prompt template. Again, this is I think the older way of doing it in Langchain. There are other newer ways, but um, you know you can do whatever you want. So the prompt here has uh, the system. I'm just telling it this agent is this helpful assistant helping me access Postgres. You can give it anything you want. It doesn't have to be this specific. 
we're, we're going to have this uh, later. I might do some chat history. We're not going to use it, but this is a way uh, to incorporate chat history so, or, so the agent can continue remembering the questions and answers that you ask it and it gives you. <clears throat> and then here's where I have uh, the, uh, the, some parameters um, to allow the agent um, to access, I guess, the server, right? Um, the MCP server. So first I'm going to say the Python executable path, which is going to be here under the assigned to the command. This is where I have uh, um, my Python uh, installed on my computer, uh, at least in this um, virtual environment, which I, uh, that's where I installed it. And then Postgres server script, um, this is this right here, Postgres underscore MCP. So if I right click on it, and if I do copy path, this is the path right here. You see? So that's going to be all of this. This is where I have the MCP uh, Postgres uh, server. All right? So I'm going to assign it to the arguments. So I'm assuming I haven't tried this yet, but if you have multiple MCP tools, then you just add multiple uh, uh, paths. Another one will be maybe Postgres server number two or SQL server or whatever you want, Gmail server, script path, and just add it as another argument right another argument another argument if you want like three tools right in this case we only have one tool so we're going to use it that way and then we have to create an async function this is for langchain agent to connect to the mcp server it has to be async so here's a doc string telling the agent um what it's supposed to do right connect to mcp server run the langchain agent um, this function at least, and then we're going to um, do uh, with studio client serve parameters. These are the uh, parameters, and studio client I think is 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 something that we I forgot where I got that. Oh, here that we uh, imported MCP client. Um, so we're gonna uh, import. Uh, we're gonna uh, read the parameters, and then we're going to do another async. Uh, we're going to create the session. This is all from the language and documentation. I pretty much copy pasted this part. I'm going to initialize the session and I'm going to wait for the MCP uh, tool to load. Um, and then I'm going to create tool calling agent. This is like the older way of doing it. It might still be the same, but I'm going to incorporate here my model, my tools, my prompt. And then I'm going to use the agent ex uh, executor um to um that we also imported here at the very beginning to actually um set up the agent right i have the agent i have the tools and verbose meaning that it's going to think out loud so we're going to see how it's thinking you see how we see the thinking process invoking so, so on so on and then here is where we <clears throat> do agent ex uh, executor dot ai invoke and we get the query is going to be the inputs here is a query query this is just a string and this is going to be the input the the string from the user what i ask here is going to be that query right so the query and then we're not going to use chat history today but eventually we can do with chat history so we can continue asking it questions and then we're going to get the output and return the output okay so this output is um right here for this for this agent. All right, so let's see what happens. How do we incorporate this function, which creates the agent and gives it the necessary tools, the MCP uh, Postgres server, how do we incorporate it into our dash, dash app, run agent async? So what we're going to do is first, we're going to create the basic layout. We're going to incorporate it here, as you can see here, run agent async on uh, line 154. But before we go into this callback, it's the only callback we're using. We're going to create the layout. The layout is pretty basic. We have our title. We have our uh, label, our input field. Let's look at our input field, title, label, input field, a button, and then agent response and an empty HTML div where the response is going to go. A button, agent response, a loading mechanism. So you have the spinner and then an empty HTML div where the response is going to go. See agent response output, agent response output. So we're going to, the agent is going to uh, return the response right here. Return, return, return. 
where is it? The result to the children in this HTML div. So at the very last component of the page. All right, so what are we doing? This is the callback. This is where all the magic happens. Let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna take the state of the user query input, which is my field, right? I'm just gonna take the value, whatever is written, the value, right? Whatever question I ask, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna hold on to it until this callback is triggered. Now this callback is triggered once the end clicks is once the button is clicked. So once end clicks equals one or two or three, this whole function is triggered and it will read the query, right? In this case, the query is going to be whatever, how many rows does my table have, right? So this is going to be the query, one second, um, right here, the query, how many table ro rows does my table have? And now, it activates this function to say, if there's no query, please enter a query. So look at this. We're going to enter no query. Submit. Please enter a query. All right. So it realizes there's no uh, query is false. Now, if there is a query, like how many rows does my table have, what it's going to do is going to do only these this, this two lines, really, um, aside from the printing. We're going to use asyncio.run. Now this is the way, this is important, this is the way to run async functions within Dash, okay? Because run agent async, this function is an async function, you have to say async io.run in order to run this function. This is telling Dash, well, wait until everything in the function is, is um, you, uh, uh, finished, and only then I'll return the result or run it as an async function. And we're going to take the query. All right. So the query is, remember, how many rows does my table have? So that's the query. So it's going to say how many rows, it's going to activate this function. How many rows does my agent have? It's going to activate the, uh, the agent, the MCP server, give it the tools. Remember this tool right here. It's going to uh, include that into the agent uh, executor and then it's going to say invoke this is the query right invoking the agent how many rows does my table have and then the agent right here before this line of code when it invokes a question before it gets the response what it's going to do is going to say okay Adam is asking me how many rows does my table have here in the query so <clears throat> I know I have, in this case, I should probably use one of my tools, which is this one, execute Postgres SQL query safely for a user's table, because that's, he's asking a question about his table. So then the agent is going to activate this tool. And this tool, the agent knows that the agent has to write an SQL query. So it's going to take my question, my query, how many tables, how many rows does my table have, and it's going to write an SQL query based on that question is going to be smart enough to write the SQL query, which is this select count all as total rows from users. So it's, it's adding this, this query to this function. <clears throat> and this query, this SQL query is going to be executed and return all rows in the format of a JSON uh, in the JSON format. So the user is going to get all of this, the, the agent, sorry, is going to get all of this. And now the agent is going to is going to be smart enough to interpret the JSON result and give us the solution in natural language in English. Right here, it's going to give us an output, right? So the output is not the JSON format. The output is whatever the AI agent says the output is. So the AI agent is going to see this number and it's going to say, ah, oh, okay, the user table has 217,000 rows. This is going to be the output. And this output is the same thing as the result on 1156, right? This result is the output of this function. So it returns this output, in this case, the number of rows, to the children. Okay? We'll do one, one last example. Remember, we asked it, where is it? How many? <clears throat> Remember, we asked it. 
how what are the unique values in my agency column? We have this question right here. You, what are the unique values in my agency column? Agency column. So this question, let's go back all the way up. Remember how it works. This question is going to be here, this query. How many well, unique values in my columns? This query is going to be part of the, the main argument of this function, right? The async function. How many values does my column have? Boom, we have this query right here. It's not SQL yet, it's just a regular string question. Query, initiate the agent, the MCP server, the tools. And now here's a query, how many value, unique values does my column have? Now the agent is smart enough to say, oh, okay, Adam, Adam is asking me about unique column values. I should probably, in his Postgres table, I should probably activate or use this tool that I have, MCP tool called query data. And to use this tool, me as an agent, I know that I have to give it an SQL query. I can't just repeat Adam's question, how many unique values does my column, does my agency column have? Because that's not an SQL query. I have to create an SQL query. So the agent is smart enough to create an SQL query. Select distinct agent agency from users. The agent, um, this function connects to the Postgres table on my computer, returns uh, as a JSON format all the rows or the, all the, you know, the answers. And these are the unique values. Da, 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 da. And then the agent is smart enough to say, OK, these are this is what the MCP tool returned. Let me give Adam the answer in natural language, right? In English, the unique values in the agency column are one, two, three, four, right? What we saw, what we saw here before, one, two, three, four, with the names. So this is how um, Langchain agents can be incorporated, uh, uh, can integrate MCP servers. In this case, we integrated our Postgres MCP server, and this is how you can <clears throat> integrate both Langchain and the MCP server into Dash. This was a lot. Uh, it will help if you actually go download the code, uh, download the virtual environment, uh, create your virtual environment, and run it on your computer. But if you have any questions, please let me know under the um, YouTube description or just contact me on Charming Data. Me or the Charming Data community can, can definitely help you answer some of these questions. I'm also going to, we're also going to meet, I don't think I created the event yet, but this uh, Saturday, yes, on 9, 9.30, I'm going to explain this a little bit better to those people who join us. And we're going to talk about this whole this whole process before we go into our May data set and create some AI agents there. All right. Thank you all. Uh, always remember, we're better together as so I help each other.